The sun has gone down, but the stars have come out. It's getting lively here in New Orleans for the second stop on the 2022 AVP Tour. It's the New Orleans Open. Second day action, and we're closing out the night with one final epic match out of the men's side of the bracket on the winner's side. It's going to be Taylor Crab and Taylor Sander, a little Taylor gang, versus the number seven seed, Paul Lotman and his young partner, just 20 years old, Miles Partain. Yeah, that's right. The seven seed working their way through the winner's bracket. It's Cameron Irwin alongside Dane Flynn, and we've been coming to you live from Coconut Beach Volleyball Complex all weekend long. It is the final match of day two. We've got Mark Sherman down on the sand. Uno mas, one more match here under the lights in New Orleans. And it's time to send one more team to the semifinals. And this first team I'm going to talk about, they have been impressing. And this first guy has been impressing for a long time on the hard court. He represented Team USA in the Olympic Games in 2012. Played his college ball at Long Beach State University, Mr. Paul Lottman. And his partner at, what are you, are you 15 years old now? 16, 17, 18, 19, 19, 19, yes. We, were, I, we, were, we had a debate earlier. We're like, how, you're 20 now. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, at 20 years young, out of Pacific Palisades, a phenom on the hard court and here on the beach. What do you like better? You can say it, you like beach volleyball more. Let me hear it for Miles Partain. Boy, what a match of indoor and beach volleyball stars. And the first guy I'm gonna talk about over here, player of the year out of Long Beach State University at just six feet, six one, six, we're six foot even. A ridiculous athlete as an outside hitter at Long Beach State. But he was made to play beach volleyball out of Honolulu, Hawaii, Mr. Taylor Crab. And his partner out of Carson, California, one of the best outside hitters in the world, hits the most ridiculous bick out of the back row that you ever did see. Represented Team USA at the Olympic Games out of Brigham Young University. Let me hear it for Taylor Sender. All right. Here we go. The final match of day number two, Taylor Sander and Taylor Crab against the young Miles Partain and his very legendary partner, none other than Paul Lotman. Cameron Irwin alongside Dane Blanton. And man, has it been an epic day. And you can see one fun little added element, the wind picking up late here in the evening in New Orleans. Winner moves on to the semifinal. Loser goes to the contenders. We start on Taylor Sander. Oh, for the Taylor. It will be Taylor. For the two-time Olympian and one-time Olympic bronze medalist, Taylor Sander. Great outside hitter out of BYU. First season on the sand for Taylor Sander. They option quickly, challenging that block right after the serve. Here's a look at Paul Lotman, also an Olympian for our USA men's national team back in 2012. Told me recently he's been working on his finesse game, something to pay attention to. Loves to bring the pace, power, and the happy angle. Fun added dynamic with his young partner. One of the great setters on the beach right now. Very deceptive, great serve as well. Something he's been bringing from the indoor game to the beach. No Here's way. a look at that southpaw, Miles Partain. Yeah, and everybody knows that guy right there, Mr. Taylor Crab, the bug, the scattering across the court. One of the great defenders, not just in the United States, but internationally as well. Mm -hmm. 
Miles Partain for two three. He'll serve. The kid. Miles Partain with a nice hit cross court. You know, Cameron, I've been waiting for this matchup because of the athleticism. All four of these athletes are just so athletic. I think it's going to come down to who can be more consistent from a serve receive situation, who can pass the ball well. And I think that Taylor Standard might yeah. have the advantage there as he definitely detonates that one. Yeah, we're going to be seeing a lot of that Taylor Sander hitting the ball as hard as you think is possible and then continuing to just up that level. Wow, that is something spectacular. He's got one of the quickest arms on tour. We got net violation Looking for the touch off the block. Three, four. There Absolutely. is a net violation. I think it's so interesting, Cameron, the, the fact, you know, Jake Gibb retiring and Taylor Crabb picking up Taylor Sander, who's a spectacular athlete, but definitely undersized as a blocker. And I, well, I think it'll be interesting to see, you know, how how he progresses as a blocker. You know, it, it's at 6'3", that's about what my height was when I used to split block, and now these blockers are just huge. Yeah, you think of Phil Dahlhauser, one of the big time blockers and the goat at the left hand again. But how about the defense of Taylor Crabb stepping up? Wrist away from the right from side, Crabb, Miles Partain. Partain. Now, Miles Partain, such a weapon. You know, he took his freshman year at UCLA to be a reserve setter, and then he stepped into the limelight this year, become the Mountain Pacific Sports Federation player of the year. He knows how to command an indoor offense as a setter. Puts himself in a good position, but unfortunately that's one of the most Always frustrating big, things. Absolutely. You get a dig as a defender, but yet yeah, your blockers in the net. Good look at Taylor Crabb, one of the most athletic players that I have ever seen play the game. Such a quick arm. You know, if I were playing in this day and age, I don't know if I'd want to go up against the athleticism of Crabb and his uh, partner, Sander. They're just so dynamic. You let you have that huge block up at the net. Yeah, and that was a perfect rally to display that dynamic and athletic play from Taylor and Taylor. Check this out, the pokey dig from Taylor Crab to the option. You kidding me? And even Lotman gets back there in the backcourt getting blown up. 6-5 now, Crab and Sander on top. And the option. And this is a scary thought. When you got a lefty on the right side, not only can he option, but you also have Lotman on the right, or some, excuse me, on the left side. You also have Lotman that's got a strong arm into the middle as well. The danger yeah, of these nothing, two can both option. Nothing better than being a left-handed setter and a, a right side player. Can you, you can just come in and do as you please. At six foot two, he's a sizable setter and he just has such good command on the ball. I can't wait to see the progression of Miles Partain. There has definitely been a progression. He came onto the sand and was already phenomenal, but it's fun in talking to his partner, Paul Lotman, and how Miles has developed as they continue to work on Lotman. Again, there's the option. But Lotman has commented on his increased service pressure and how that's been an area of focus, trying to add even more from the indoor game now onto the beach. He said yeah, his maturity just that. continues to grow as well. Not just necessarily in how he is on the court because he's so stoic, but in his decision-making as well, Dave. Yeah, when you have that option and there's a rip of a serve, but with that option of being that left hand, it changes your entire defensive set. You think you're, you're you know, you want to play conventional. You want that other team to have three contacts and get a blocker in front. But when you have a, a really solid option as Miles Partain is, it really puts the defense on their heels constantly because you just don't know what kind of look you're going to get. 
And a miss serve from Paul Lottman. So important with these teams and the level at which they play, trying to get teams out of system becomes that much more crucial. Taylor Crab though, knows his job, gets the ball in and wants Sharp to play defense. Miles Partain, take a look at one of his more conventional hits, loves to go away from body right there, has a pretty straight approach, but you just don't know which direction he's gonna hit the ball, and that's the sign of an excellent hitter. They now go at Taylor Crab. Nice pickup from Miles Partain. Quick snap from the bug. When you're playing against a Taylor Crab and a Taylor Sander, they're only going to give you so many opportunities to score. Partain has opportunity, gets dug, and then Crab comes down. He knows exactly how to rip it down the middle. Limited opportunities against the defensive wonder of Taylor Crab, but wow, again, who do you serve at this point? Because I wouldn't want to deal with either of those options. It seems like Miles Partain taking over. If he gets served, he's using those conventional three contacts. And if Lottman gets served, he's teeing it up for that option play. So a lot of offensive power so far. And we're just early in this first set. Offensive power from the service line as well. Lottman dialing up at ace. 11 points on the board now for the seventh seed. Lottman, nice toss. And he comes a little outside in, right to the middle of the court, catches the Taylors off guard for the point. And I think that Partain and Lotman are gonna have to continue serving like this. This is the way that you beat an athletic team. You get them out of system, you get them out of sync. 10-12 here in set number one, which means we have reached the technical, the technical timeout. We only have to wait about one minute see these four back in action. Those ratty old gym shorts that you have from college, they're done, get them out of here. It's time to upgrade your short game with the one from Fabletics Men. We love them. Your girlfriend will be stealing these. They're the best. This fabric fixes another major issue, fit. It's got this crazy stretch to it that looks so cute when I do my yoga or errands or like literally anything. They're the most comfortable, best feeling, luxe-tastic fabric that we have ever worn. Dear Mainland, aloha. My brother and I hear lots of you have discovered a real Hawaiian favorite, Big Wave Golden Ale. That's the good kind stuff, yeah, bro. Maybe it's the island flavor that makes each sip taste like a little vacation. That's a whole lot of little vacations right there, huh, brother? That's like a big vacation. Retirement. One life, right? Mahalo. Big Wave Golden Ale from Kona Brewing. And eager to get back out on the court where Crab, Sander, Partain, and Lotman. The score is now 12 apiece in set number one out of the technical timeout. Just a few points now played here in New Orleans. Cameron Irwin alongside Dana Blanton in our final match on Saturday.
Yeah, it's been an incredible day, Cameron. So many ups and downs, so many upsets on the men's side as well. And it's so cool, I think, to play under the lights. The players don't get that opportunity that often. And uh, that's what makes this event special. Yeah, the first of the season under the lights. And, and it is an epic setting here in New Orleans. The crowd has been lively. Everyone having a great time and points. loving it. These pro volleyball players on the beach here on the AVP tour. Oh, yeah, I saw that. There's a lot of room for the taking here on the men's side as well. Number two seed, Andy Benish and Nick Lucina now out of the tournament. Hey. Haven't picked up their second loss and Taylor Crab finds some more sand into the cut. Yeah, if you have that finesse shot, as you see right here, Taylor Crab comes in. He's already put you on defense. You're on your heels because he's lit up a few balls and hit the ball with a lot of velocity, and that opens up those finesse shots. The jump set. Miles Cartain making it look easy. Airborne. Well, that's why he's the MPSF Player of the Year as an indoor setter for UCLA with those type of deceptive moves. Got the blocker to bite, and there's just nothing you can do defensively. That was a beautifully executed play. Setting on the stand is already a hard enough skill, and he just decides to level up every single year. Getting those feet off the sand. Little out of system and the no looking cookie, but Partain is all over it. Yeah! Miles is it at 16, Lefty to the line. Wow, Miles Partain, you know, he does things that you are difficult to teach. Only things that kind of come around when you, you grow up, you live by the beach. He's from Pacific Palisades. And he, you know, he's kind of that beach rat. He's been playing the sport his entire life. And that's where you see that creativity. And another miss from the back line, but I do like the aggressiveness of Partain and Lautman there. Both these teams coming off two matches that went three sets just a day ago. Tossing that one up is Lautman. That ball's gotta go. Lautman tries to get a foot on it. I always love the foot dig, like the rundown, and I, I always wonder, like, could you have gotten it better with your foot, or actually, if you tried to use your hand? But we've seen some amazing digs here. Lotman takes off, knows he needs to get it over. I like the attempt right there. I still always go back to the Casey Patterson foot dig in New York. Still one of the all-time great moments. What a little grunt there from Lotman finishing that swing. Well, if you wanted fireworks, you came to the right place. All four of these athletes just unleashing balls left and right. So fun to watch this level of volleyball. Lobman coming into this match with a 429 efficiency after day one. And Taylor Crab just missing that ball wide. Tough ball coming over his, the back of his shoulder. He hasn't seen as many attacks coming in to day number two as his partner Taylor Sander. 74 yesterday for Taylor Sander, whereas Taylor Crab just 49. Yeah, and this one, Miles Partain getting the bulk of the work. We noted him going on on that second contact, but he's already had 15 attempts so far. His partner, Lotman, just four. Nice touch and play off of the block. And Taylor Sander went flying there. A little bit of a broad jump. Talk about athleticism. That ball going into the tape.
Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that ball was blocked or if it was just hit straight into the tape. Two uncharacteristic errors in a row. The hit out of bounds by Crab and then Sander in the bottom of the net. That's a huge difference here as Partain and Lottman pull away. So Partain and Lottman have had an incredible journey here in New Orleans. You take a look back at this last play. Way back in 2008. When Miles can barely talk. There's the Lyle nice touch off the block. Player of the year in the ABCA and Long Beach State. Yeah, and I don't think I, that even, even if that even ball cleared. had gone over. <laughs> even if that ball had gone over, I think Lotman had the nice four call there into the angle jumping. But Lotman and Partain, like I mentioned, had two three set battles yesterday. Their first round matchup was against the 10 seed Tim Baumgren and Peter Marciniak. That went 23-21, 13-21, and then they closed it out 15-11 in a game that went an hour and six and we minutes. The Their next Before opponent was the number everybody. two seed, Andy Benish and Nick Lucena. That match finished 18-16 in the third Vince and went an hour and four minutes. Paul Lutman. This just being their one match of the day here on Saturday. So you get those two wins on Friday. And you put yourself in good position having to only play one on Saturday evening. Yeah, well, that is impressive. With those wins right there. The winning the close ones, Cameron, that's what it's all about here. You know, it comes down to one or two points. And if you're able to pull that off, it gives you so much momentum. Or if you don't pull it out, you end up on the other side of the bracket and sometimes out of the tournament early. And right now, Taylor Crabb and Taylor Sander trying to figure out exactly how to approach this team of Partain and Lotman. Trailing by three, set number one. And wow, talk about confidence option from five feet long. And Taylor, Taylor Crabb says, I don't want to see any of that. Well dug point to Crabb and Sander. Yeah, great ball control right there by Crab and Sander knows what to do to put that thing away. But they're going to have to manufacture, I think, one more point here to get themselves back in the mix. And that's a great serve. That's a great start from Lotman. Again, bringing the hammer. 2017, it is set point for Partain and Lotman. Around How about that quick snap from Taylor Crab? Feet all the way underneath that ball. Taylor Crab, he just has so much range in that shoulder. He can go away and go cross body. There's no real one tendency that so you have to read and and react every time. Not an easy task. Ball out of bounds. Set number one. I almost thought that was an A. Finish off 21-18, Partain and Lotman at this set number one. Rapp and Sander, I have a feeling they're going to be and feeling it out here in Lottman. set number two now that they understand who's on the other side. The AVP is brought to you by Waikea Hawaiian Volcanic Water. Live Aloha. Drink Waikea at waikea.com by KT Tape, helping athletes of all levels train longer and finish stronger. And by Monster Hydro, hard charging hydration.
Dear Mainland, aloha. My brother and I hear lots of you have discovered a real Hawaiian favorite, big wave golden ale. That's the good kind stuff, yeah, bro. Maybe it's the island flavor that makes each sip taste like a little vacation. That's a whole lot of little vacations right there, huh, brother? That's like a big vacation. Retirement. Retirement. One life, right? Mahalo. Big Wave Golden Ale from Kona Brewing. I mean, what's volleyball without a few extra referees? Having a good time. I'm not sure I uh, want them doing my game. I think we might get a few extra red cards, but it is men's action in the winner's bracket here at the New Orleans Open. Cameron Irwin alongside Dane Plan, and these were outstanding so professionals. Miles Taylor Bartain. Kraft, Taylor Sander, Miles Bertain, and Paul Lotman. Now in the set number two. Dane, what would you get a red card for? <laughs> I don't know, but I, I don't think I'd want to deal with those referees because I don't know if they're uh, thinking straight. But um, I've gotten a few red cards in my day, uh, not well, many, like more, really more yellow oh, cards. Like out, right? You don't see it very that's often that's now because it, it seems like the, the, the refs will push players a little quicker than usual. But um, let's just say I've, I've kicked a few balls out of the stadium before. <laughs> Says the Olympic gold medalist. I don't even know how many national championships you've got now, Dane. It's the uh, the legend, Dane Plan. Such a pleasure to have him on broadcast and getting this last game here on Saturday evening. I can imagine you punting a few out of stadium court. Taylor Crab, <laughs> talk about range, but again, Miles Partain, another good read. much pace you can hear the snap off the ball oh, is Taylor Crab. Taylor Crab, so deceptive. He comes in kind of nonchalant, but then he has just this lightning quick arm swing. He's up and then boom, he snaps that ball, gets all sorts of velocity on it. And Miles Partain can't handle that one. Something to pay attention to is that angle block in front of Miles Partain when he's having to attack from the left side. We've seen it a few times already, and it did work in the favor of Taylor Sander with a block as well, but that's on Paul Lotman. What a beautiful block right there by Taylor Sander. Gets up and over. Look at that press on the net. Deceptive, too. Looked like it was going to block the angle, then really pushed over into that line and that's what it's all about really deceiving the hitter and trying to hide where you are going to be blocking well no and you make a great point there because as the blocking game continues to develop from a deception point we're starting to see so many more blockers making moves from their hips up or their shoulders up right we used to see people just jumping into the angle full send and now we're starting to see jumping up into the line and then shoulder press and hands into a different position to cover a different zone. Taylor Sander, it seems like, is really focusing in, maybe being a little bit of an undersized blocker and trying to utilize those moves with his arms and his shoulder pressing in different directions. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Cameron. Some blockers' body position is one thing. That's what you're going to see out of your peripheral. And then you want to put your arms in a completely different location. But I think the, the evolution of blocking, there's another block by Sander. That one doesn't go down. And that's a kill. But the evolution of blocking over the last 10 to 15 years has, has really risen. And I think... Uh, Mole and Sorum from Norway, that team really started to do some things that have been contagious. Other players have tried to implement them in the game, and it, it's fun to watch uh, Mole and Sorum play because of the ability to block up at the net. Yeah, without a doubt, they were pretty revolutionary in that sense. Giving some more yeah. undersized blockers hope with Taylor Sander again. 
Wow, up and yep. over, just six foot three and jetting over the net as we call it. Look at his timing, he waits, nice little crouch, gets up and he pushes back into the court so he doesn't get used out of bounds. Very smart play against the young Miles Partain. Bringing the tough serve now as well. Yeah. Oh, using the block. Looking what a for play. another oh, block, man. but that Getting one away. just Get wide. Five, five. Two great U.S. outside hitters battling it out from the block and attack standpoint. They know how to chisel a block or two. Yeah, I think that Miles tried to chisel Sander on that last one, wasn't able to do it, and then Lotman showing him how it's done on that second one. This is how you do it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and on this one right here, check out Taylor Crab. The ball's a little close, so he's ready for the joust. The block doesn't come, but he rolls it right down the line. Such a smart player, such a cagey player is Taylor Crab. Without a doubt, it's Lotman's having. Yeah, he, th he thinks that the, he might have thrown that ball and John King, the head referee, not buying it. Yeah, with the sly smile from John King. Tough turn over the left shoulder for Taylor Sander. Talk about being cagey, another tight ball, but this time Miles Partain putting it right on the line. Hey, we only call doubles, not 1.75s. And Paul Lotman talking through the net, saying you only get one more. I think he's still referring to that contact by Taylor Crabb. It'll be interesting. Can Partain and Lotman hold it together here? Because you got to believe that Crabb and Sander are going to give them all that they can right here. What a block touch. And how about that set? Taylor Crabb gets a free opportunity here. Oh, and Paul Lockman has got six. a sharp edge to him right now. It seems like Lockman, every time he gets out on the court, he gets a little bit better. This time, shows line, stays in the line. I think Crabb thought he was going to fake into that angle, but that ball gets blocked straight down. We're going to take the switch at 7-7. Seven, seven. Who out there is rooting Sander. for Taylor and Taylor in the fourth set number three? It's Miles. And who's rooting for Paul and Miles? It's Miles, Partain, and Lotnick can hang around like they did and then turn it up at the end of the set. Crab and Sander could be in a little trouble. It seems like Crab and Sander trying to, to crack the code, come up with some something to stop this team, but they haven't had the answers yet. Great save by Taylor Crabb. And wow, he looking over for the an net. over the net call. <laughs> yeah, Dane, you said it. Wow, that ball looked like it was going to come on the side of Crabb and Stander with no problem. And Lotman, I believe, went over and just threw it down. Love to see that replay. Here we go, taking a look at it. That's a tough angle to see. But Lotman turned, walked away, didn't want any part of the argument. Sometimes <laughs> that is a guilty plea. Hey, but he'll take the point nonetheless. Starting to get a little chippier out there, and I mean that in the best possible way. One call going one direction, the other moment, the other direction. And it's given all four of these pros a little bit of an extra edge to their game right now. Quick snap from Taylor Crabb from the service line. Check down, and Taylor Crabb nearly walks into that one. And like a whip, unleashing Taylor Crabb into the angle. Yeah, you think that they, they haven't figured out these last couple of plays. Crabb has run down that line, made it look really easy but they just haven't been able to pull away. Mark Bartain and Lotman have played steady.
Talk about a challenging play. The short middle serve and then pushing all the way to an antenna. A lot of footwork there by the youngster. <laughs> Fast feet on the approach. Nobody's been working on the ladders. Whoa, big serve, blowing up Paul Lotman. Scooping that and another overhead pokey dig trap. Nola, welcome to the MVP. Well, you can give Taylor Crab one opportunity and stop him, but you can't give him two. All right, he gets this with a pokey, gathers himself, comes in. Body facing the middle, he goes away, and look at Taylor Crab. Little animation. You don't see him get that fired up very often. He knows that their backs are against the wall. They have to win this second set. Yeah, without a doubt, we are it is now time for the Sky Vodka Sky Ball Contest. Let's get a couple of volleyballs. So in the technical timeout. Okay, thank you. Let's take a look go, at the TF. Who will it be? Who will it be? <laughs> and it's Paul Lotman. I think this earns a dig right here. Earning it, because I think this ultimately got him a call for that overplay. <laughs> That's a good dig right there for Paul Lotman. Here's the deal. Anytime you can get the referee, Cameron, to smile like that, you know that you're going to get maybe some payback down the road because, you know, referees are usually pretty stoic. Lotman must have said something pretty funny to get John King laughing like that. Well, in this technical timeout, I just want to bring up one point, and that is look at John King as he's up on the head official's Stand, but for this pairing of Paul Lotman and Miles Cartain, I mentioned that they had some tough battles to get to this point. And I asked him what carried them through some of those victories. And they said oh, well, that it was the surface pressure which translated to a lot of point scoring now. opportunities. Wins, they one. said they are constantly trying to stress yeah. teams. So it's Who not necessarily two? the ebb and flows, but trying to apply pressure in number every three. phase, especially from that service and line. Four. And it really helped their block and tee. I also asked them right, about what they right, talked about right, after right. set two because they lost both of set two yesterday. And they talked about hitting the reset and also staying as aggressive We're as possible. Now, Let's see what they do out of this technical here. timeout because it's you have mentioned time and time again, Taylor and Taylor still trying up. to find the equation to defeat these two after dropping set number one. Yeah, I love all those things that you said, Cameron, and that you got from Lotman and Partain. They seem like such an athletic team. They got third place, I believe, last year in Chicago, and they're a dangerous squad because they play with a sense of urgency, because they play aggressive. They just have to make sure that they play with patience during the game and let the game come to them. That's a great point. So watch for the patience here in set number two. Whip, My Sander. goodness, Taylor Stander. What has he got in that arm? <laughs> in the arm? What about the legs right here? I've heard that this is a jumper's beach <laughs> and it's a bit hard packed, but this is a little ridiculous. Sometimes it looks like the Taylors are playing on grass. <laughs> Miles Partain, <laughs> that point is, is yours. That no question jumpy about jump. that. Just you can jump, I can jump a little higher. It's a lot of back and forth. That's what makes this matchup so exciting and so fun to watch. Man, in the indoor game as a setter, you love when the middle blocker jumps with the setter. But I imagine as a beach player, it's ten times a better feeling <laughs> to get the blocker to jump with you. What a set from Taylor Crab and Oh my goodness. Let's talk about that running. set right there. Look like the Taylors were in so much trouble, and then that set 
absolutely perfect. So serving pressure coming from Partain and Lotman, but Crab and Sander seem to have the answer. Tough serve. Using the Ball gets the about ace. six to seven inches higher than Miles Partain expected after the trickle. Love that angle to see how much side spin is on that ball from the serve oh, that one out of, bounds? It's of Taylor Sander. That was a great view. And just how dynamic he is from the service line. Not just top spin, but also the side spin. Yeah, I think that's bringing that imagination and creativity from the indoor game. Sometimes on the beach, you think like, you know, it's going to be more traditional. But indoor, they're just banging the jump serve no matter where the ball is. And I think that aspect of the indoor game Taylor Sander has brought to the beat. Now, without a doubt, plenty of creativity between these two now. Taylor Crabb looking to score a few more and push this to a third. And another option play for Miles Partain. We haven't seen it for a little while. It's almost like they've lulled them to sleep, not being able to utilize it. Yeah, it's just, it's so difficult. You're kind of in between. You're just getting to the net to block. You're just getting set defensively. And all of a sudden that ball is hit by the setter. And that's just the type of player Partain is. He's dangerous from anywhere on the court. Short serve to Sander. Try to take away some of that approach, but he works hard with his feet, still gets the side out. Taylor Crab walking to the net. Interesting, maybe for some protection on the option. Wow. Looking for the ball Rip mark the now. Dumpster. Look at look at uh, Lotman kind of stepping on the line. I think that's an indication again of guilt. Look at that, just catching the outside of the line. 17 13 and Lotman are decided yes, it is time to take a timeout and cool things off here in New Orleans for Taylor and Taylor. Born from the blue where the sky meets the coastal California waters, keep it fresh. 13 to 17 now trailing by four. Those two haven't been able to utilize the option play as much as they did in game number one. Dane, it feels like there are certain types of serves or maybe locations of serves that maybe can negate or make the option play more challenging. What are some of those serves or maybe locations to be able to do that? Yeah, it's difficult. If you serve the back part Jeez. of the court, it's Own very it. difficult to get that this ball teed up all the way to the net. So if someone's comfortable like putting up the option play, maybe move them all the way back with a you know a deep float serve hitting on that back line, then they have to pass the ball the whole length of the court. And then another thing is really making a difficult rip of a jump serve. If, if that ball's coming with all sorts of velocity, the last thing you're thinking about is directing it perfectly for your setter to option over. And, you know, the same the Taylors have really done that by putting serving pressure and that has hampered that second attack, that option play. Yeah, it's a great point to bring up is the increased service pressure really kind of frustrating that of Lotman and Partain. We've seen only about two option plays here in set number two for those two. Also important to note, they have had three setters losing the second set in each of them. So if this goes three, who knows what's going to happen. Open net off the knee. Taylor Crabb is patrolling the net. Just uh, you know what I think Taylor Crabb said to his partner, Taylor Sander. He said, hey, I'll go up and I'll block. You don't worry about coming up to the net and I'll patrol the net. You just rip your jump serve and the strategy seems to be working right now. I thought it was thanks for the set, bro.
Taylor Sanders serves the ball so hard, it's hard to tell whether it's in or out. That's how fast it's moving. John King giving that respect of getting off the stand, taking a look, but ultimately that serve is ruled out just as it was called, but they are just serving BBs. They're ripping the ball right now, the Taylors. On a few of those digs, a little bit seems like they deeper into the court, into that angle, dig Lotman. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It seems like he's stepping back, really focused on that deeper hit, allowing Lotman, if he wants to, to hit the ball sharper and down, but I think his natural hit's a little deeper. It's a great adjustment by Taylor Crabb. Holy Taylor Sanders, down the line. Playing at an extremely high level here. And nobody's pulling any punches in this one. Everyone laying it all on the line. They've had all day to think about this matchup. And uh, we're seeing a lot of heavy hitters out there. All four of these players pack a huge arm swing. And it's difficult to defend against when the ball's moving at that type of velocity. I saw that thing coming my direction. I would just run away. 20 to 16 at this point. And in the final And match here we come with set number three. three. <laughs> Who will it be? Another three set battle for these two teams. Who's moving on to the semifinals? We all know it's a good idea to recycle. But what happens to that aluminum can or all that paper after you put it in the recycling bin? Where does it go? What does it become in its second life? See how WM is always working for a sustainable tomorrow at WM.com slash stories. Get ready for a whole new wave of white cloth. New full flavor White Claw Surf. Sensational refreshment for a taste like no other. The final game of the day. It comes down to this on the men's side on the winner's bracket. Paul Lotman, Miles Partain versus Taylor Crabb and Taylor Sander. Take a look at some of those efficiencies. The aces to arrow ratio. Dane, what is it going to come down to in set three? Well, if you look at these stats, they're so close in every category. It's he who's going to be more aggressive from that back line. You know, this isn't a finesse game. This is a power game. All four players love to play with power. So it's about getting your opposition off guard, getting them out of system. Try to score that half point, sometimes we say, from the serve. Get them in trouble. And you got to risk reward. You're going to miss some serves, but that's okay. You got to go for it here in the third. Going for it in the third is exactly what Crab and Sander are going to do with Taylor Crab now at the net, allowing for Sander to really get after this serve. Misses just long. Oh, 
Kyle Spartain will start things off for Partain and Lawman. The seven seed who picked up two big wins just a day ago. I snap and just like crab, Partain walks into that. Covered, is it inbounds? Yes. What a rally from all four of these guys. And a deep swing as he's falling down. Taylor Sander with another kill. You know what? Partain had that play. He ran it down. He dug the ball that was shot down the line. And it was a great opportunity for them to score, but they could not do it. Taylor Sander ends up with the kill and with that point, that could be a huge momentum builder. A little bit of an upset that, gun, that went awry there off of Miles Partain. I think Paul Lottman just kind of purposefully chucked that one into the net, knowing that wasn't a good ball. Again, jump set to kill. I'm not sure there's, yeah, there's anything no, cooler in volleyball right now. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing you can do about that right there because you have to protect against Partain going on too, and you're only one blocker up there. So if you bite on that, then the hitter's open. And so it's, it's perplexing that play. Taylor Sander with a quick side out. And Dane, we've talked about the service pressure to maybe try and get rid of some of those option plays. You talked about it being deep, but we've also seen some short serves or shorter balls being tossed into the mix. And I feel like when they're trying to chase down some of those shorter balls, they're not necessarily lifting them, them up high enough for two very important parts of the game, whether it's the option or the jump set for Miles Partain. Yeah, I agree. You know, that short serve can be effective as well. But uh, there's Partain taking right, care so of business. You're floor, right. Sometimes the short serve can take away that option. Sometimes the deep serve. But right now, I think the, the Crab and Sander are just ripping the ball, and the velocity yeah. is causing all sorts of problems. Yeah, without a doubt. Three all. Winner to the semifinals, loser to the contenders bracket. And a little bit of a missed contact there for Miles Partain. You could almost hear that as it duffed off his hand. Yeah, it looked like he was a little indecisive with his serve. Was he going to do a float serve? Was he going to rip a jump serve? He was kind of in between, and you cannot be indecisive when you go back there. And how about that, Taylor Crab with an ace? I'm telling you, Cameron, that first play, that was a line shot that Partain dug and was un unable to convert could have repercussions. You know, you set the tone sometimes on certain plays, and right now, Crab and Sander are, are taking the momentum that they had in the second set here in this third set, and it could be very difficult to stop. Yeah, I think you're right, Dane. You know, a lot of the momentum does feel like it's on the side of Crab and Sander, however, it's important to remember, there's just a one point differential right now between these two teams. And we have seen both of them ebb and flow throughout this match. See if Lotman can find something at the net now. Cross Potty Bay. Not so Caroline fast. Taylor, Taylor Crab, great Crab. vision. Quick put away. Yes, yeah, Potty facing cross court, but then he comes cross body on this one. He makes such last minute decisions that it's difficult for a blocker where you got to commit to some area and he just waits until the last minute, sees the open area, has absolutely fantastic vision. Another tough serve into the middle, velocity at its peak. Taylor and Taylor Grab again at the Seven net. Four. You can see, Cameron, that. It's not huge errors, it's just a pass that's two feet too close to the net or a dig that's not passed in the right area. Or as you said, the serve not put up in that position to be able to option. It's those little things that start to add up. 
powerful and it's relentless too, right? I mean, it's got to be so tough having somebody bring the velocity time and time again. It's never ceasing. So as a reception, you're all, as a receiver, you're almost thinking how daunting it can be. George Taylor Crab here. Yes, that reaches Gill for Taylor Crab. Miles Partain was there, but an even better touch on the ball for Taylor Crab, just dropping that in front. Yeah, I thought the same thing. Partain is in the right position, but unable to make the conversion or even the dig right there. And that's been the difference. You know, that's why we're looking at a three point lead. It may not seem like a lot, but a three point lead in a game to 15, especially with this team, is. Monumental, and there's a shake. We're nine five. Make it a four point lead at Dana Bland Crab and Stander up nine to five. Well, we're going to take a team timeout. Timeouts by Partine and Last one on the arm of Taylor Crab. As timeout has now been called for Partine and Lotman. Dane, I'm sure you've been put in positions like this where you're feeling like your back's against the wall. I know we'd like to think that you won every game. You won an Olympic gold medal, so it makes sense. But at the same time, what are you trying to tell yourself mentally in this moment, back four points when it's just a race to 15? Well, you, at this point, you put yourself in a little bit of a corner. The big key is that you don't panic, but you do have to start to turn up the pressure. You can't play relaxed as if it's a deuce game and you're going back and forth and it's a tie score. You have to manufacture some points by risking it. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. You can see Lottman upset of the position that he has put this team in and he knows that they had a huge opportunities that they just were not able to capitalize on and now it's going to be a lot to dig out of this nine to five hole well and dane to your point one of the conversations i had with lotman was how they did get out to an early lead in set three in their previous two matches and he said it allowed them to play freely and right now, that's not necessarily the case as they are trailing by four points. So definitely a little bit more pressure applied here. And you've got to find a way to still be aggressive and still play with that freedom. Make it another block. Taylor Very Sanders timely for Taylor Sander. Uh, the rains it pours right now and everything going the way of Sander and Crab, but you know, they're making their luck. They're going for it on the serve. They're putting Lotman in pressure situations and they're taking them out of their game, taking away their strengths and it's working. I love that thing, making their own luck. A great call as the option, so smooth for Miles Partain. Yeah, when you do the damage that has been done up 10 to six in a game to 15, now you can kind of settle in. Now you can just say, hey, I side out five more times and the victory is ours and we're moving to the semifinals. Easier said than done, especially if a lot of them put some pressure from that back line. Which is exactly what he does. An ace serve for Paul Lotman. That's what they need. A little bit more of that that catches Taylor Crab to his left side. He's unable to control it. <laughs> Took a shot at John King. I kid, not actually. <laughs> John's still smiling. off the platform of Taylor Crab. Fake the option and let the kid rip. Yeah, we we haven't talked about it a lot because he, he just fits right in and he, he's just a professional. But Miles Partain, just 20 years of age out here, bringing it. Just imagine how this kid's gonna look in five, 10 years when he's representing the United States in the Olympics. Gonna be a scary, scary thought for anyone on the opposing Somehow side of the net. Well, late now, Crab and Sander. We're gonna take the side switch. 
for potentially a last time in this match. Just three points now for Crab and Sander to move on to tomorrow's semifinal. We've got a full day of coverage coming to you for the AVP 2022 New Orleans Open. Finishing out some contenders bracket matches tomorrow afternoon. Then we'll move on to the semifinals and the finals for both the men and the women. Jump set again. Lefty. Looked like that they were in a bit of trouble. The Taylor had his balance going forward, therefore he couldn't keep that ball into play. Like a little concern like, on the face of Taylor Kraft. Yeah, maybe uh, Taylor Sander not feeling that great after that last play. And just attacking the top of the block again. Mikey's on a trampoline, Taylor Kraft getting in the air. Looks like the arm is fine on Taylor Sander. Another great jump serve. New Orleans and he needs is just point. one. Taylor and Taylor have taken over. It's 14 9. Yeah, we said it was who would take the risk and who would get the rewards. It has been the Taylors who have risked it all. They're bombing serves and they've put Botman and Partain in a really tough situation. One point away now. 14 to 9. It is match point. And they're going to have to earn it with the side out. Yeah, what a turnaround here, Cameron, for Crab and Sander, who lost that first one by three points and then completely turned it around. It seems like they've been in control ever since. End of 14. Some work to be done. They go short to Sander. He needs one ball. Taylor, Sander, Taylor Crab just turned it up. Crab and Sander. Semi final. 15 10, it's set number three. They are in. Wow, it was like a freight train. It started a little slow, but once it got going in that second set, there was no looking back. And really, what I like about Crab and Sander is as much pressure as they put on, they just kept dialing it up more and more. And there was just no answer from Lotman and Partain. Yeah, it seemed like they came out with a great game plan into set two and then into set three. It carried over as you take a look at some of the angles that that man is able to hit. Just so fun to watch the Taylors step up their game from one to two into three. So big congrats to those two as they're moving on to the semifinal here in New Orleans. We have a full day of coverage tomorrow. Again, a couple contenders bracket matchups and then moving on to the semifinals and the finals as well. Those two will have a shot through the contenders bracket. But now you can see how we have shaped up here on the men's side. The one and three seed have got their spot already solidified in the semifinal. Dahlhauser, Patterson, Taylor Crabb, and Taylor Sander. The two seed out of the tournament at this point. Andy Bennett and Nick Lucena, who will be our New Orleans champs. Well, you're going to have to wait a few more hours to find out championship Sunday is just around the corner. It's been a full day of fun here in New Orleans. For myself, Dane Gwynn, Rich Lambord, our Echo Entertainment crew, and AVP, thanks so much for joining us on the AVP Tour.